That's great, Zek. I do want to come a little bit more to this U.S. inability to react more adequately to these hinge points you identified. You actually already mentioned a few factors in your previous answers in inability to conduct technically sound uh, analysis and then incorporate it into policy deliberations. But you also mentioned a sort of U.S. Um, tendency to view DPRK motives as essentially malign as the DPRK not being serious about the diplomatic path. Um, then there's possibly other explanations like a certain degree of bureaucratic inertia on the US side, sort of a tendency across administrations to deal with certain policy problems in a similar fashion. I mean, what's the story here? What factor uh, in your mind explains this repeated inability to, to react more adequately to these hinge points? So to all of the possibilities that you mentioned, the answer is yes. <laughs> that's, the, that's the short answer. <laughs> so al almost all of those things played uh, into it. I, I, I would say the, the most important one uh, was uh, what, what you indicate, sort of the issue of motives uh, and, and what, we, what the US government really thought was driving the North Koreans. Uh, you know, it, it was interesting, uh, Sarah brought to, to my attention uh, Zachary Shore's book uh, uh, of uh, really, you know, understanding the motives, the drivers and the constraints uh, of, uh, of your enemies or, or your adversaries. Uh, you know, what he calls strategic empathy, really understanding. And there were people in the United States who had developed that strategic empathy through lots of interactions with the North Koreans. Uh, but our U.S. government, for the most part, past the Clinton administration, just didn't have that sort of understanding. So I, I think that was the, the primary driver. Uh, and what's so interesting, and I try to bring that out in the book, is that it, you know the, the three administrations where we had the major hinge points and we had the issues, uh, we're starting with the George W. Bush administration, going to Obama, and then going to Trump. And it turns out they couldn't have been more different than night and day. And yet they made, you know, sort of the similar mistakes uh, and not understanding uh, the motive. So that was the major point. I, I would say, uh, you know, in terms of uh, bureaucratic inertia, et cetera, of course, the government has that all the time. <laughs> you know, whether it played any role here, I'm not so sure. What was more important was actually what, what I call sort of dysfunction and disarray. Uh, within the administrations and and wild disagreements, you know, for example, in the second term of the Bush administration, uh, they had individuals like Ambassador Chris Hill, who had generally he had the right idea as to what he needed to do with the North Koreans. So he was going off on one side. On the other side, though, uh, you had people like John Bolton uh, and, and also Bob Joseph. Uh, and they were going in a different direction. And so there was sort of infighting. Uh, and then that all the way, that particularly was prevalent uh, uh, at Hanoi uh, during the, uh, the last hinge point.